Good day folks, welcome to Aim Small. By now you should know my name, it's Gert. Alright, today we're going to look at Pallet BC. That does not stand for Before Cannons, it's also not BS, that's a different acronym. We're looking at the Ballistic Equivalent Coefficient. There we go, I can't spell it either, so don't worry about it. So, I made a couple of errors while doing this video, nothing serious. I didn't look at any of the results. Uh, what happened is my microphone didn't work. So I have to reshoot the intro. Hello, this is the reshoot. And I'll add some voice notes as we go along. So why is BC important? For everybody that shoots beyond 30 meters, you'll know that a pallet doesn't fly in a straight line. It gets affected by wind, it gets affected by gravity, and a lot of other stuff. Okay. And if we know approximately where to aim, the chances of us actually hitting the target increases exponentially. And that's what BC is all about. BC calculates the velocity that the pallet can actually keep through the air. Now there's a couple of things to get very technical that affects the velocity of the pallet or the BC at the end of the day. Air temperature plays a role, air density plays a role, humidity plays a role, uh, barometric pressure plays a role, the wind, and the actual speed as well. Now one interesting thing that you'll notice throughout the session today as well is the faster you shoot a pallet, the lower the BC becomes. Because of the unique design and the skirt in the back Oh, I hate those. How do you Vlieg weg! Right, so because of the skirt in the back it slows the, down, slows the pallet down even faster the faster you shoot it. And you'll see that in the results today as well. As I shot the pallets a little bit slower, slower, slower due to the, the weight increasing, the BC actually starts to improve. So your re test results will probably differ from mine. I'll put all the barometric pressures and everything up right before I start shooting to give you indication what was my situation in this regard. I found some lovely websites. I think H&N's got one of the best there that shows you the pallet weight, the BC, and approximately the distance that pallet is made for. Um, also found on some of the air rifle for forums most of the BCs for um, the JSBs. But today I'm going to add to that list the JTSs in 10.7, uh, was it 10.4 grain, as well as the 8.7 grain, and I'm also going to add both the Qs in 177 to that list. So that's the Q, the uh, elongated one, the, what do they call it? Ah, well, you get the domed one and then you get the little bit longer one in that regard. Both of them I'm going to test today. So in totality, I'm probably going to shoot 9 or 10 different pellets. I'll give you guys the BC as we go along. So my situation today, it is a nice warm 30 degrees Celsius. The humidity is at 50%, that will play a role. The barometric pressure is at 112 millibar. And the wind speed is about 3 kilometers per hour. So luckily I'm shooting at an enclosed environment. It's my private shooting range. But wind from behind and wind from in the front will also affect the BC going on. Yes, there's also spin drift and all of those fancy things. But for a 177, ah, just ignore it. Okay. So where can I use this? We know that chair gun is one of those awesome programs where you can actually build a dope chart for yourself. We've got Strelok and Strelok Pro, we've got the new uh, Element Optics and their ballistic calculators and all of that. So once I've got the BC, that will make the whole scenario easier and I can actually go out there and shoot according to what the actual BC is or my circumstances. Now ladies and gentlemen, your results will differ from mine because you're going to shoot in different environments than what I do. But the key element here is that they won't differ that much. So if you've got approximate speed, got approximate BC, you're 90% there. If you want to get 100% there, you'll need to shoot the pallet the morning that you shoot it, get the BC of that exact same scenario. And if your temperature changes, your wind changes, your BC is going to change as we go along. All right, so that's enough jibber jabber jabber. Let's go into the testing. And right at the end, I'll give you a summary of everything that I've shot and all the different BCs. I'll also include the day uh, temperatures and everything that I've got with me. So without further ado, let's jump into one of my old favorites, the JSBs in 8.44. JSBs, 8.44s, let's go. Right, accuracy doesn't matter, we're just here for the speed. All right, 
let's go and have a look at the results from there. So if I go into my true ballistic and I go into the averages, 10 shots, the low was 787, the average was 807.7 and my average BC was 0 0.023. Now if I compare that to the chart that I got off Air Gun Nation or something there about some of the forums, slight difference. But that is a good true starting point for us to start this exercise. I'm happy with an average BC in my current conditions, which I shoot most of the time. That's a BC of 0.023 and that's the benchmark. That is the, the BC I'm going to use when I look at the Hawk chair gun, which I use for my doping charge when I go FT shooting. And then you can also use the same uh, BC when you use the the Strelox and all the other and the true ballistics and all of those other new fancy calculators out there All right, so the benchmark is set. Let me readjust the crony quickly For the next lady for a shave. All right, so next up is gonna be the Barracuda greens now these babies are only at 6.64 grain See you now. We're gonna shoot the Barracuda greens. They are a full 6.64 grain. So they're quite light I readjusted my crony accordingly. 10 shots. Let's go. Ten shots later, let's quickly have a look at the results. They were running quite fast at because they're only 6.64 grain at 866 feet per second average. BC of 0 0.013. Quite interesting that the faster pellet, as I said initially, the faster the pellet, the worse the BC is going to get. There's the proof in the pudding. And the BC of 0 0.013. Interesting. Let's try something a little bit heavier and back to normal lead. Is the QYS, and I'm starting off with the domes. They are on 8.48 grain. This is going to be interesting because next up is the streamlined, the slightly elongated nosy one. But let's try the normal domed one first. I know I'm not shooting groupings today, but that was pretty impressive. Right, let's look at the results. Average speed 807, BC 0 0.021, slightly slower in the BC perspective than the JSBs, and these are their down versions. Hmm, interesting. Time to go for the streamlines in the same weight. Maybe I can do this in one section. Let's quickly load up. These are the Q's streamlines, 8.48 grain. Let's rip it. Again, impressive grouping. Well done, QEs, QEs. All right, let's look at the results. 806 average speed, not too shabby, but the BC, even though they stream down, the BC is down to 0 0.019, the average BC. Which is quite interesting that a streamlined pallet, BC is not as good as a domed shape. So maybe the dome shape pallets do have something great going for them. Okay. I love these results, quite interesting. Now I can go and update my ballistics chart. Let me quickly set up for the next batch of pellets. Back in a second. Let's shoot these JTSs in 8.7 grain. can't count but that was 10 shots all right let's look at the results um in the front <laughs> that was a good grouping let's look at the results rather not here about groupings it's about speed all right let's look at that average 802 spread not a little bit high for my liking but in any case average bc 0 0.022 so they are almost the same as the jsbs in these circumstances hmm very, very interesting. Let's set up for the next one. 
let's do this 10 shots copper coated field target trophy powers h and n 10 shots all right shiny that's all i'm gonna say shiny average 784 oh look at that bc 0 0.025 the copper coated ones are slightly faster on the bc equivalent as the lead ones this far hmm shiver that's the only copper ones i've got here for testing today all right never mind let's carry on Coming in at 9.57 grain, 9.6 for the true ballistic, is the Barracuda FT from our friends H&N. I love these pellets. Let's see what they do from a BC perspective. Oh wow, this HW loves them. <gasps> That was one of my better groupings of the day and I'm not even shooting for accuracy. Mm. The JSBs are going to be jealous. Mm. All right, let's look at the results quickly. Oh, average BC 0 0.024. So the heavier I go at this stage, the better the BC becomes. That's quite weird. Mm. All right, I've got some more to test. Let's jump into this. So this is one of the most beloved pallets out on the market. These are the Air Arms Heavies, Diablo Field Heavies in 10.3 grains. Let's see what they do from a BC perspective. I understand why you guys love these pallets. Bloody accurate, mate. Now that's a British Irish accent. All right, let's look at the results. Oh wow, look at that BC, 0 0.03. That's a massive step up from everything I've shot this far. Wow, all right, hmm, two more to go. Second last one for today, and again, first time for me, Virgin. Um, this is the JTS dead centers, but these are the takedown dome air pellets in 10.4. I think this one is gonna be the competition for the uh, JSBs and the air arms and the H&Ns in this regard. Let's see what they do from a BC perspective. That 10 shots was so much fun. I accidentally shot 11 and I only loaded 10. Gives you an idea. Uh, almost same all the in front. So from an accuracy perspective right out there, let's look at a BC. BC slightly lower than the uh, air arms at 0 0.028, but still mightily impressive. Last one up is going to be another H&N. Let me quickly adjust everything accordingly. Barracuda matches 10.6 grain. Okay. It was weird. Eight of them almost same holding and two that dropped quite low. I don't know if I clipped them in while loading, but in any case, we hear about ballistics, not accuracy. Alrighty then, where are we now? Alright, so the 10.65s came in with a BC of 0 0.026. Now the great thing about today's experiment is that all of these pellets were shot in exactly the same circumstances. So this is the BC I'm getting out of a single gun, single setup, everything exactly the same, same power, everything as stable as you can get. I'm not at all upset about any of the results I saw this far. All right, so let me go to the, my computer. Let's go and calculate a few things, get some graphs up for you. See you in a second. All right, so what is the conclusion out of this? Ladies and gentlemen, BC is important. Right. 
pallet PC is a lot worse than slack PC. And it all depends on what measurement you use. Do you use the G1, the G4, the G7, all the, not the G spots, that's a different measurement, ladies and gentlemen. But you use all these different Gs in calculation that. What I've done is I've used the True Ballistic Chronograph, and I think they use a GA if I'm not mistaken, to determine the speed of these pallets and the velocity as well as the BC. Now, you can't measure BC with a normal chronograph because a chronograph only gives you one reading. To determine BC, you need multiple readings of the pallet over different speeds and different, not different speeds, over diff different distances. And that's how you calculate BC. How fast does it actually slow down and what is the speed down range? So I did my test today at 30 meters, which I think is quite awesome for 177 pallet. And that is where the BC comes from. So, if we look at a quick summary, your BC will differ from mine, probably, not much, but this will give you a great indication of where to start when you do your dope charts and all of that. And then obviously, if you want me to test some other pallets, other brands, whatever, you are more than welcome to send me a batch. I'll test them for you free of charge. How does that sound? Just send them to me. I need some stuff in here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing. See you in the next one. That's all, folks.